The TCL QM8K and the Sony Bravia 9 are two of the most talked about mini LED flagships, but they take very different paths to great pictures. TCL's QM8K sticks to the brand's muscle car formula, pile on the zones, push serious peak brightness, and keep gaming specs on the bleeding edge. On the other hand, Sony's Bravia 9 leans into finesse a dense mini LED backlight, wide angle optics, and Sony's fantastic XR processing that cleans up streaming noise, upscales lower resolutions, and smooths gradients better than most. Hey, I'm Nicholas from Matings.com. After looking at these two models side by side, here's where each wins, where each loses, and which one belongs in your living room. In HDR, the QM8K wastes no time reminding you why TCL has a reputation for raw light output. In movie mode with local dimming set to high, the 65 inch QM8K we tested puts small highlight windows well into the mid 3000 nit range on a 10% slide. Now that's bright. Sony's Bravia 9 is not dim, but it is tuned differently. It pushes very high peak brightness too, just not in the same turn your heads across the room way as the QMNK. Not surprising, Sony TVs tend to be tuned for accuracy over outright nits. On small highlights, the Bravia 9 looks punchy and refined, and it really excels at maintaining its brightness, but the TCL usually looks livelier. The TCL really outpaces the Sony when it comes to peak performance, and most highlights in real content tend to be on screen for only a short time, which gives the advantage to the QMNK. Gamers should note that the QM8K's HDR output in game mode remains very close to its movie modes. You don't give up much pop when you switch to low lag settings. The Bravia 9 loses more of its highlight intensity in game mode and never has the same blazing look that the TCL can produce on small HR elements. This is where the QM8K surprised us most. Last year's TCL flagship chased massive numbers and often over-brightened mid-tones and highlights. The QM8K reigns that in. Its PQ EOTF tracking is much closer to what it should be through most of the curve, which means that when a scene is graded to look moody, it stays moody. And when the grade is meant to pop only in certain elements, it does that without lifting the entire image. Even better, the curve is most accurate below 700 nits. This means that for content mastered at 600 nits, the TV is on target, but for content mastered at 1000 or 4000 nits, some of the brighter highlights won't be nearly as accurate. As for the Sony, its tracking is excellent. Near black shadows are on point, mids are solid, and the roll off is smooth. On accuracy alone, the Bravia 9 still looks slightly more reference, but TCL has closed the gap so much that you'll only notice the difference with 4000 nit content where the Sony excels. Considering how bright the QM8K is, that is a big win for TCL. Processing is the core reason cinephiles tend to buy Sony. The Bravia's 9 XR processing cleans up low bitrate content without turning faces waxy. Blocky compression in dark scenes is reduced with minimal texture loss and edge enhancement is subtle that you rarely see any ringing. Upscaling from 720p cable or DVDs looks sharp without excessive loss of detail. Gradients are also smooth very well. Simply put, the Sony has no weakness when it comes to processing. As for the TCL, it's solid, but it's still not on Sony's level. Its low quality content smoothing is its best trick. It knocks out a lot of macro blocking while keeping a decent amount of detail. Upscaling is competent, but noticeably softer than Sony's, and fine line detail can look a bit mushy next to the Bravia 9. Gradient handling is in the good, but not great bucket. You may spot baddening in dark grays and blues, or in bright greens, which the Sony hides better. If you mainly watch heavily compressed content and you sit close, the Sony's processing will look cleaner. If you mostly watch high bitrate discs and well-mastered streaming sources, the TCL's processing is more than adequate and its other strengths become more meaningful. HDR color volume favors the bright, high contrast TVs, which is why the QM8K impresses. It can hold saturation in brighter colors better than many rivals. Still, the Sony is right up there with it. In fact, the Bravia 9 actually shows more saturated reds, cyans, magentas, and yellows. The TCL does have an edge in whites though, but you'd be hard pressed to notice it in practice. Out of the box though, accuracy is Sony's win, and it's not close. 
the Bravia 9 is way closer to the D65 white point than the TCL, with better white balance and fewer mapping errors across all colors. If you're not planning to calibrate and want a picture that looks right on day one, the Sony makes that easier. The TCL is acceptable, but shows clear blue and red balance issues in some grays, along with visible tone mapping quirks in certain hues. And if you want to calibrate your sets, the Sony is way easier to calibrate than the TCL. Overall, there's no contest. Accuracy is a clean sweep for Sony. Both sets are mini LEDs with hundreds to thousands of dimming zones. What you notice first is not raw zone count, but how well each brand drives those zones. The QMAK is aggressive. On star fields and high contrast GUI overlays, it darkens quickly and deeply, which keeps letterbox bars clean for a TV this bright. Blooming isn't gone, but it's minimal, and transitions from one zone to the next are fast enough that highlight edges smear less during motion. Black uniformity with local dimming on high is fantastic. With dimming off, you will see some clouding, but you're not buying a set like this to run it with the feature disabled. Sony's approach is also stellar. In complex scenes with small bright objects moving over dark backgrounds, it sometimes allows slightly more glow than the TCL. But overall, it performs even better with less blooming and even less visible zone transitions. These are two of the best LED TVs on the market, so you really can't go wrong. If you press us though, we'd give the slight edge to Sony. Now this is the first big surprise. Yeah, for daytime TV and sports, the QMAK is a cannon. SCR output is very high, so highlights and whites stay clean even when sunlight bounces around your room. But it can't beat the Bravia 9. You heard that right. The Sony is even brighter. Sure, in 10% peak slides, the TCL does outpace the Sony, but the Bravia has the edge everywhere else. Most importantly, it's much brighter in real content. No one will be running the Bravia 9 at max brightness in SCR. It's just way too bright. Plus, these TVs have pretty solid reflection handling, although nothing exceptional. TCL improved its anti-reflective handling compared to the previous generation. Direct reflections aren't gone, but they are dulled enough that the set's sheer light output can power through in most living rooms. The same thing can be said about the Bravia 9. The TCL is still better though, as its blacks don't rise much in bright rooms, while the Sony's do. For gaming, it's not close. The TCL QMAK offers two HDMI 2.1 ports for 4K at 144Hz, plus 1080p at 288Hz through Game Accelerator, along with VRR and ALLM. Input lag is very low at 120Hz and 144Hz, and the set remains very bright in game mode. For competitive shooters or racing sims on a PC, the TCL feels snappy and looks sharp in motion, especially with its very quick pixel transitions. Its only small note is that 60Hz lag is a little higher than we would like, but still fine for consoles. The Bravia 9 has two HDMI 2.1 ports capped at 4K at 120Hz, along with VRR and ALLM. Input lag is higher than the TCLs and pixel response is slower. So even when you hit 120FPS, the picture has more blur in motion. Sony's game menu is convenient, and if you play on PlayStation, the auto HDR tone mapping integration is nice. None of that changes the fact that in terms of speed, refresh ceiling, and motion clarity, TCL is the clear winner. So, which should you buy? Pricing swings week to week, but at comparable sizes, the QMAK is typically hundreds less than the Bravia 9. The TCL's combination of sheer brightness, fast gaming features, and excellent black uniformity is a lot of value for the money. Sony asks you to pay for its processing and polish, and many home theater fans are happy to do so, but it's rarely the value play. If you watch a lot of sports and movies during the day, or you want the brightest possible highlights at night without giving up decent accuracy, the TCL QMAK is a blast. Its HDR peaks are enormous, its tone mapping is finally disciplined, its dimming is quick and clean, and its black uniformity is among the best we've seen from a mini LED. Add 4K at 144Hz, 1080p at 288Hz, very low high refresh lag, and very fast pixel transitions for an LED TV, and bam, you have an easy recommendation for gamers and bright room viewers. Choose the Bravia 9 if you watch films and you want minimal fuss and maximum polish. Sony's out-of-the-box accuracy is better, 
Its processing is best in class for messy streams, gradients are smoother, and its viewing angles are slightly more consistent. In a dark room with high quality sources, the Bravia 9 looks natural and cohesive. If you rarely game and you value that look above all else, it earns its keep. If you do game often, or you want the brightest and fastest TV for your dollar, the TCL is the smarter buy. Two excellent mini LEDs, two personalities. The TCL QMAK is the brightness bruiser that finally learned restraint, pairing huge peaks with much improved PQ EOTF tracking, top tier black uniformity, and elite gaming specs. The Sony Bravia 9 is the connoisseur's choice, built around careful tone mapping, stellar processing, and a refined cinematic image. Your room, your habits, and your budget decide the winner. For most mixed usage with some gaming, pick the QMAK. For purists who sit down to watch movies after dark and want the cleanest processing, the Bravia 9 will make you smile every night. That wraps up our comparison between the TCL QMAK and the Sony Bravia 9. Are you willing to dig deep in your wallet for the Sony? Or you prefer the bang for your buck TCL QMAK? Let us know in the comments. Until next time, I'm Nicholas from Meetings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. Ciao. The Sony of Bravia... Sonia. Oh, now I've it in my head. <laughs> okay. On the other hand, Sonia's Bravia... Nah, Sony's Bravia 9. All right, yeah, I got this, I got this. Choose the Sonia Bravia 9.